Hello everyone and welcome back to This Day in History, our nightly look back at a specific day in history, where we take a look back at a specific day in history and examine the events of that day, the historical context in which they took place, and the historical ramifications of those events. As always, please hit the like button if you have not yet. Uh, the subscribe button, the bell notification icon to be alerted anytime I post new content, and tell a friend. And without any further ado, for a abbreviated video, I'll get into that at the end, this day in history, February 25th. And on this day, in 1964, a young man at the age of 22 then by, known by the name of Cassius Clay, defeated world boxing champion Sonny Liston by technical knockout in the sixth round after Liston complained about an arm injury that had been nagging him. So he said he couldn't go on, and Clay won and was declared the winner and declared, I am the greatest. Clay would later go, no, go on to be known as Muhammad Ali, and I think that it would be pretty hard to argue that Muhammad Ali is not the greatest boxing champion and boxer of all time, and he began his world championship dominance on this day in 1964. Some births that occurred on this day in 1949 in Memphis, Tennessee, Rick Flair was born. Rick Flair, of course, is the 16-time world wrestling champion. Uh, Flair um, is considered by many to be one of the greatest of all time and is known for his signature catchphrases such as I'm a limousine riding, jet flying, wheeling dealing, kiss stealing, son of a gun. I spilt more in liquor last year than you made. With a tear in my eye. I've had the great pleasure in my lifetime of seeing Ric Flair perform in person. Live in the flesh. And his ability to take an audience in his hand is, is one of the greatest. Um, I have had, in my lifetime had the great fortune to see many great professional wrestlers perform in person. I've saw The Rock, Electric, Stone Cold Steve Austin. The pop is amazing. The Undertaker. The craft, the subtlety, is unmistaken. But Ric Flair is on another level. He's got it all. And just a great professional wrestler. One of the best, as I said. Um, and he was born on this day in 1944. Uh... An interesting note about Ric Flair's birth. He was adopted by a couple uh, from Minnesota. and would be raised in Minnesota. Later in his life, Ric Flair would come to learn. Um, and it's not, I mean, his parents didn't know this. His adopted parents. Uh, that he was a victim of a, uh, a baby stealing scandal. Uh, that took place in Tennessee um, in the late 40s uh, to early 50s um, that was very notorious um, later uh, when it was discovered. So uh, that is a sad note on Ric Flair's life, uh, but he uh, has certainly uh, been an accomplished uh, professional wrestler. Um, and had a long and distinguished uh, career. Uh, some might contend that he held on too long, uh, but a distinguished career nonetheless. 
some deaths that occurred on this day. In 2005, at the age of 83 in Oxford, England, Peter Benison died. Benison is the founder of the non-profit human rights group Amnesty International. Um, there is a myth surrounding the creation of Amnesty International. Um, it was widely reported for years that Benison became so enraged uh, when reading a report of two Portuguese students uh, sentenced to seven years in prison for raising their glass in a toast to freedom. And it's been you know, kind of discredited, uh, but Benison was a fighter for human rights. Uh, he had an article called The Forgotten Prisoners, and the letter asked readers to write London, showing, you know, write letters showing their support for these prisoners, for their political and religious belief. Um, And um, Amnesty International is one of the largest human rights groups um, in the world. Um, and Benison, obviously, is a person deserving of praise. And for years, Benison um, refused all honors. Uh, but in his 80s, largely to please his family, uh, he accepted the Pride of Britain Award for Lifetime Achievement. Uh, so um, a real line of human rights uh, passed away. Um, on this day in 2005, I will see you all tomorrow. Um, a quick note on the abbreviated version of today's video. Earlier, I made a Nevada caucus reaction video uh, that has vanished into the hitherland. Um, after making it and reviewing it, I determined that I didn't need to upload it because it's very, very angry um, and confrontational. Um, so, I decided not to post it, um, and it has gone down the memory hole. I will post a video tomorrow, uh, or Friday, it's, it's up in the air, on my reaction to tonight's Democratic debate and predictions for South Carolina. Quick note on my uh, thoughts on Nevada. Uh, Bernie Sanders won a very convincing victory. Congratulations to Senator Sanders and his supporters uh, for a decisive victory in Nevada. Uh, my hat's off. Up to you. Um, but with that comes front-runner status. And a new level of scrutiny. Um and needs to give Democratic primary voters across this country a lot of pause um, as they enter the voting booth. I'm going to give you an analogy. Electability matters. Candidate quality matters. Be concerned with that when you go into the voting booth. Think about the consequences of one vote. You're not just voting for president in November. In 33 states across this country, you're going to be voting for Senate. Some of them are very winnable. You're going to be voting for House races. A lot of seats that are going to be defended were former Republican-held seats. These are competitive seats where you have to run sensible Democrats. They cannot be have an anchor tied around their neck by the top of the ticket. But hats off to Senator Sanders and his supporters for their victory. It's on to South Carolina. That is a must-win for Joe Biden. In my opinion, he's got to win big. Uh, to, to maintain um, viability. And then three days later, it's off to Super Tuesday. So we've got some videos to pump out here in the coming days on the race and thoughts. So I will see you all then, and I will see you later.